Hey y'all, my name is Tyson, and this is part two of using the scale tool as a modeling technique. Yes, that's right. So we do have another video released just prior to this one where we go into using the scale tool to manipulate geometry, pull geometry out, scale it up and down. And in that one, we stayed very symmetrical and cylindrical. But in this one, we're going to break away from that and do some uh, different shapes. And this plane example will be a good uh, option to practice on. So let's have a look. This should be pretty interesting. We have, for example, this bent wing and uh, some things to try. But let's start back here with the tail because this will a good way to introduce the simple idea. Like before, we're simply pulling out a shape, then selecting that new shape and using the scale tool to scale either side or from the center. Then we may pull this out some more, but rather than scaling from the center all the time, which we were doing previously, this time, we may be scaling from one side or the other. We might be scaling from the center, but it's a little more freeform modeling as we move along. Now, if we get to a curve like this, you might add more steps in here than what I'm going to do because we're just going to keep kind of showing this idea. But you can see here and, and get the general idea of, of how this works. Maybe one more, scale it from the center. And of course, we could come back in and select any of these and tweak, uh, tweak them as needed. Even select uh, oh, you know several and say, let's bring these all down, let's make that thinner. But even though this is, you know, fairly low geometry, if we were to smooth these edges, it still looks pretty good. So you, again, you can add more steps um, and make this look even smoother along this curve. But that's the basic idea is just using that scale tool, pulling out, sometimes using move. Let's try that again. This time we'll see uh, about building out this wing a little bit. I'm going to select this profile, make it a component. And I'm going to do that so that I can make a copy of it and start manipulating it down here um, where I can see this. Now, depending on how you set up your reference photos, you may not need to do this because you, you might set these up aligned better, but this will be fine. I'm going to align that a little better and maybe move it down just so it's close. We just want to get the idea here. So let's say we bring this down and we scale this a little bit. And you may or may not, if you're actually punching through your reference like I am, need to turn x-ray mode on somewhat frequently. But so we've scaled that in a little bit, made our wing a little thinner. Now we pull that out a little more. I'm going to turn this, I'm going to try and turn this with uh, not too much detail, just in the interest of time, but you might make a few more transitions. But let's rotate this and see if we can move it up a little bit and move it back. Okay. I'm going to do that once more and now here you can see it's, it's doing something a little weird. It doesn't have, if we look at hidden geometry, it doesn't necessarily have the geometry to move in the direction I want it to. Often when you use the scale tool, it will create a whole bunch of autofold lines for you and you can move it around, but if need be, we may invoke autofold 
and move it where we want. Now let's say we wanted to scale this from here. So if I hit the scale tool, you can see that the grips are not aligned with that surface. And if I wanted to scale it just say from the center, but maintain that, that plane, this isn't gonna work. So there's a couple things we could try here. One thing that's always good to at least see how well it works is say a line axis. This is gonna align the axis with this surface, right? I'm right clicking on the surface, say align axis. And now if I hit the scale tool, it is aligned with that surface. Now it still may not fully be what I want. Maybe I want it to be more aligned with the length of this wing segment. So if that's the case, we may come back here and just say, let's either grab the access tool or I'll right click on an access line, hit place. And then I will manually set the axis. Now, if I hit the scale tool, it's aligned pretty well. I like that. And I could, let's say, manipulate this wing a little bit more. Let's add one more bend to this and then we'll have that curve finished out. So if I take this, I'm gonna scale it a little bit. And I, I definitely wanna be a little more careful of my reference photos, but we're just trying to do the, the rough version here. Again, the auto fold is preventing it. So I'm gonna to toggle my auto fold with the move tool and rotate this Something like that should be pretty close. That looks all right. Again, if I hit the scale tool, it's not aligned. So I'm gonna test align axis. Probably I'll want it again, manually place this axis. And that should, now if I hit the scale tool, that should give me a good starting point for the rest of this. So if I scale this down, now I'd wanna reference this other photo, of course, but that is the idea is that we can continue working on this. And shaping this wing. Once we've changed this axis a couple times, it's gonna ask us if we want to have that as our new uh, axis for the entire component. We're changing it uh, several times. You may or may not want to do that, but that's the general idea. Another thing to be aware of, when I am looking at this and the axis is different, if I wanted to go to a top view to say model this wing, if I look at the top view here, that, that may not be what you expect because it's showing me the top view of this changed axis. So I'm gonna stop editing that component go to the top view, maybe toggle perspective off, and then come back in to this. I may have changed that axis, so it may not do what I need, but that's the idea generally. Now, one thing that we did and uh, this is a bit of a mistake that I'd want to go back and kind of undo. But if we look at our geometry here, when I was scaling this geometry and extending it, it doesn't always leave a, a line here. So for example, if I align the axis, scale from the center and pull again. Well, we did get one, but depending on if you scale just from one side, you may not create that line. Now, ideally, this is you know flat, so we could simply fix this by drawing it in, but you may need to go back um, a little stitching, but you may need to go back, always just be careful of that you have edges to work from, or you can have some geometry like that.
So uh, we need to take some more time to fix this up and make sure this wing looks good. Um, but that's the idea. We'll leave it there for now. One final thing that I want to talk about when using this scale method. When we're doing the wing, you know, we may take this, have it make it a component, mirror it to the other side. But the fuselage, we could either do as a mirrored component or we could do as one object that we're scaling. And we just want to make sure we're preserving the center in everything we do. So we just want to be very careful that we don't do something like this, where I scale from the other side. If I look at hidden geometry, I've pulled away. That's that center point. So maintain that center uh, line. scale this, scale this down, and so forth. See, I, I wasn't careful. I'd want to scale from the center and then scale from here. It, it's pretty easy to, uh, you know, as you're learning this method, to make mistakes like that. And you'll learn <laughs> pretty quickly after you've done a few of these and you'll say, oops, I better go back and manipulate that a little differently. So maintain that center line. When you do, here's one, if I said that was the last tip, here's maybe the last, last tip or suggestion. This, um, if, it, if you have a pretty cylindrical shape that you're working with, um, it can work fine. But depending on the profile, you may have something like this where it comes to more of a point. And again, maybe, we are creating this as a mirrored component. So let's create a component out of this version and let's create a component out of this version and pull them both up similarly. So I'm gonna take this flip it and do the same here. But on one of these, because these are different components, what I want to show is that when you have a point that is at your center line, you may, and this is a personal preference, but you may want to come in and resolve that in a way that it is, uh, comes in perpendicular on both sides, something like that, just a little bit, even just so slightly. And the reason you may want to do that, when I bring this up and I select this, and I start to scale it, I scale it in and I bring it up some more. Oh, I gotta be careful where I'm scaling from. And if I did something similar here, so I bring it up, scale it back, scale it in, full scale. So I'm going to turn off hidden geometry and over here, let's hide those center lines and let's smooth some of these others. And then we'll do the same over here. Hide the center lines and smooth smooth these. This is primarily visual, but what you can see is that we still can see that ridge pretty predominantly. Now you may know that one thing that could help that is to come in and delete that interior surface. And we could do that here as well. But even when we do that, Because this came to a point, we kind of have this visual ridge line. Now, if that's something you wanted, that would, of course, be great. But just that little bit of an edge here makes this transition smooth. So be aware, based on how you draw your profiles, that, Ken, you may want to have just a little bit 
a small edge that will bring those two mirrored components together uh, in a nice parallel way where they meet as opposed to a ridge line. <laughs> okay, was that, um, I hope that was, I hope that made sense. We sort of jumped around there and, and I get it. This topic, this technique of using the scale tool, I love it. I, it's so much fun. Even after you've practiced it for a while, you'll still sometimes mess up and scale from the wrong grip and, and have to fix some things, but it opens up a lot of different shapes and objects that you can model using this technique and i wanted to sort of just introduce a couple of the things that you might run into like again changing the axis or using mirrored components together go have fun with it if you have questions on it please let us know and we'll try to answer and as always if you have questions or suggestions for future topics let us know please do subscribe give us that like if you so like, and uh, thanks y'all, we'll see you next time.